Hi, this is Jim Janesey. In this short video, I'm going to show you a couple of things about stained glass. Stained glass was essentially invented in the Middle Ages as a means of decorating large windows in churches. And as a result, the scenes that we usually associate with stained glass are religious in nature. You can find any number of churches or synagogues these days that have stained glass windows. The oldest cathedrals in Europe might have stained glass that's almost a thousand years old. In this short video, what I'm going to show you how to do is to use some simple tools on computers, PCs using PowerPoint and Windows Paint. Paint is a very crude, primitive program from the earliest days of Windows, but it's sufficient for our purposes here. The beginning of this video shows you an example of a stained glass window that I designed and then how to output that as a GIF file, that is a .gif file, which the paint program will then let you color in very quickly with a paint function. After that, we can take the finished window design and place it back into PowerPoint. You can present it that way or you can do any number of things with it. I'll even show you how to place it into a Word document if you wanted to use your design for a little ornament. So let's begin. Now I'm just going to get into my stained glass project and what I want to get into here is a little PowerPoint file that I've already prepared for this video. If I take a look at view and the normal, this is what we're aiming at to come out of PowerPoint. I wanted to show you this to let you see what we're heading for, but I'm going to go to the next slide, which is just blank, to show you how to do this. The first thing we'll do is to insert a square shape or an oblong shape. Now you'll notice it comes up in a way that we don't want, so I right mouse click and I'm going to format it. I don't want any fill and the line color should be black. With the line style, let's make this really a fat line and I'll tell you why. What will happen when we get to cropping this with a nice fat border like this, we can crop right in the middle and it's going to be just fine. Let's take and insert a couple of shapes. Just to keep things simple here, I'm going to start with a circle and I'll have to format this also so that I have no fill, I have a black line, and the style of two points is fine. So let's just sort of put this somewhere on the edge, then let's copy that and paste it, and let's get the same kind of a circle maybe over here, and let's paste one more time and get that same sort of a circle down here. Now we may want to make this a little larger. Always drag from the corner so that you get something that's not as likely to be distorted in shape. Now let's put in some straight lines. Insert shapes, straight lines. But let's just test this. You see it comes up with the format we're not interested in either. But I can do this. If I click on one of the shapes that has a format I want, that two-point black line, let's go home, format painter, and click on this one, and it assumes that format now. And that's kind of handy. So let's just take this and draw this line here. Let's copy that and paste it. And let's put this one here and maybe here. And maybe it's kind of nice to be bisecting these circles or dividing them in some way. Now let's paste again, and I'm going to get that line again. And I'll just go from here and I'll do something like this. I can add a few more lines in here with a paste. And I'll just keep this very simple so it's not an overdone example. And let's do a paste again and put in another line. Maybe something like this. And now I really do need to extend that just a bit. Okay, I've got some large areas here. Let's just do a few more lines by pasting this in 
and I can do something like this perhaps and here and one more paste and I can perhaps do something here like this. Well, that's probably enough for our purposes. You could make this much fancier if you wanted to, but you'll want to stick to some simple shapes like this. Let's save this. I didn't have to save as because I already had file here. Here comes the step that you'll want to pay attention to. You want to go here, save as, and of the many choices that PowerPoint provides, you want a GIF, G-I-F. The reason for that is this is going to let us actually fill in with color any of the areas that look white to us here because they'll be assumed to have nothing in them. So I'm going to call this, since I already have a file, stained glass GIF. I'll name this a little bit differently. I'll say demo. And I save this. Now I'm really exporting this from PowerPoint. I only have this one slide I'm interested in, so I'll say that. And if I now leave PowerPoint, you'll see that I have here stained glass demo. If I right mouse click and I attempt to see this, I can open it with the picture manager and I see that very same picture. Open it with paint. So can I do that from here with an open with? Well, it turns out I can. If this were not available to me, then I could actually go a different way and open up here and go to Programs. I'm going to have to look here in Windows 7 in these older Windows programs, not the very new ones up here, under Accessories. And under Accessories, I'll find Paint. Now let's go up here and open. And here we have to go looking for it. If things come up this way and you can't really find them very well, you can always do a right mouse click and do View, and then look for a list. And I can open up this. We're going to see a little something interesting here. First of all, I can size this in the view to maybe zoom out a bit so I can see it this way. I might want to zoom in and if I do 100%, that's actually what I'm going to get. Notice we got a small problem here in this area. That line doesn't really touch. I'll show you the effect of that in just a second. But let's do something interesting here. What I'd like to do is to confine my attention to this area, which is the window that I'm intending to color now. Let's try and color this with some interesting colors, and let's pick them out in this way. Let's start with something like a dark blue. We want to have this function here in use. This is the fill with color. So fill with color, this color. Now, anywhere I put this little paint pot will fill with that color. And it might be kind of nice to spread these things around a bit so that you do something around the edges, maybe three different areas of the same color. And let's take another color now. And let's use that in three different places. Oh, I have a problem here, though. I only intended to shade one of these, and look, at two have been done. And the reason for that is that this area that I clicked isn't completely bounded. There's probably a little gap there, and it makes all of this look like one contiguous area. So I'm going to go here and click this symbol, which is, which is the undo. Let's fix this right now. I'll use this little pencil going to go for a black color, and I'm going to go to View and zoom in so I can see this even better. What I really want to do is to color this thing here just with some little pixels that are black, because I've got to seal this thing up. Now, having done this, I've overcome a mistake that I had made earlier. Let's just, for the heck of it, fix another one right now, too. And what I'm going to do here fix this thing right here, which I had seen earlier, would have caused the same kind of problem. I could, if I want to, uh, zoom in again and make this even larger, and that might make it easier for me to do a decent job here.
let's see here, I'll switch to this color and remove by making these cells white. I'll do that. I'll clean that up a little bit. It's obviously much better if you do this in such a way that you don't have to make these corrections. Let's go to view, let's go to 100% again. And having made those corrections, let's see now if I can make this area purple as I had intended to. That means I have to select for color 1, purple, and I need the paint pot again. And now since I've sealed that up, this works just fine. Well, let's continue to color this in. Let's use some yellow, perhaps. Let's use a red. Oh, I made a mistake here, didn't I? Look at that. I have yellow in two areas. I hadn't cleaned that up. I think I'd better take care of that very quickly. But in the interest of this example, maybe I won't. I'll just leave that sit there. But here is a mistake. I didn't intend to have these two be adjacent to one another in the same color. So I'm going to undo that one. have the same sort of a problem here. Interesting. I've really made kind of a mess of this. Well, we learn from our messes, don't we? So I'm going to do this. And I think I will now use some orange and see if I have any other problems. I'll put another orange in here. And let's see if I can come up with perhaps a lighter blue. And I'm going to live with that for the moment. So our example moves along just like this. And now I have a few things left to go. And maybe I'll use a green. And I'll put the green in in ways that don't conflict. And let's see what I can do with perhaps one more color here. Well, I don't think I want to use new colors. I think what I want to do is stick to something simple here and stick to colors like this. So now I've got it all filled in, but you might say, well, what, are, what happens here with these things? Well, those are actually outside the border of our window. And what we're going to do now is to use a different tool. This is just so that I don't inadvertently use the paint pot again. But I'm going to go to Select, and I'm going to go right to the middle of this fat black line. And I'm going to go like this. This is where I'm going to crop and only take the piece of this that I really want. And that's why the fat line helps me in this case. Let's see what's going on here, though. I seem to be getting a bit of a funny effect here. So what I really want to do, let's undo that. And let's go to a different view. Let's go zoom out. And let's do our crop, our select and our crop, this way so that I can see it all on the screen. Because it turns out Paint doesn't like to have us scroll around once we're doing one of these selections. Now, let's crop. And you see, I've gotten this. I could have done a nicer job here to get these borders more consistent in size. Now let's do this. Let's go here and save as. I could save this as a GIF file again, or I could save it as a JPEG. Just for the heck of it, I'll save it as a JPEG. And it's going to go back there as this same name, JPEG. So it won't conflict with any other name. So I save that. What do I want to do with this now? Well, I've got it already in the way that I want it, so I'm just going to discard this. I'll just close. And now, let's see if I can find this. Demo JPEG. I'm going to open this. I right mouse clicked, and I'll look at a preview. And it happens to come up just this way, which is sufficient for our purposes. What do I want to do with this? Well, let's do something kind of interesting here. Let's open up PowerPoint again. And I will go to the very same set of slides. I'll show you with the view how the slide sorter works. Here was my raw drawing. Let me go to this blank slide. I'm going to insert picture. And at this point, I'll have to go find that picture again. Because while having closed this, it's not going to remember where I was. And I have to go here. And now I can find this demo. So let me click on that and insert it. That's quite large. I can take this in PowerPoint and simply resize it. 
and I'm going to do this with it. I'm going to re replicate this sometimes and make kind of a window that has some symmetry to it. So I'll take that, right mouse click, copy, right mouse click, paste. And I'll take this over here and grab this little round circle and just twist it around. And now it becomes shifted in that way. So I'm just going to adjust this with the little arrow keys. I'll paste again. Now what I want to do is twist it. And in fact, you know, I kind of changed my mind on what I want to do here. This one I had twisted completely vertically. I don't think I really wanted to twist it all the way vertically. I think what I wanted to do is build this thing this way. And now this can go down here. And with the arrow keys, I can adjust the position of these. Let's paste one more time. And now, I'm, now if I save this, save as, I'll save this little thing as one little JPEG. Having formed it in PowerPoint, I'll put it out here in my same project folder, stained glass project. Now what I'm going to say here is this is just my little ornament, and I think what I'm going to do is put this out as a JPEG, and I'll just call this my ornament an ornament so that I can use that in any kind of a document just as a decoration. Let's close this out, and I'll show you how to do that as one last action. Here I'm going to open up Word, and I'm going to insert picture, and I'll go to my Dropbox where I've got this stored. I'll find that item, and it's just called my little ornament. When I insert it, it's quite large, and it's also quite awkward. I can't grab this and move it around. I have to right mouse click on it and do text wrapping square, or in front of text, either way. Now you can grab it by the corner and change the size. Now you can move it around. And if I wanted to use this as kind of an illumination on this page, now I can start typing here, and the words will wrap around the ornament. And of course, if I move this around, you see it might split them, or I can put it there, and they would go to the left. You must do this right mouse click text wrapping square in order to have this flexibility with an ornament. That's as much as I'll show you with this little project. I hope you've enjoyed it, and think about this as a means of designing some form of modern design that could be as colorful as you want, as symmetrical as you want, kind of interesting, and maybe an expression of your own personality.